I think I remember about six years ago we sent branded marshmallows and they were awful. Like they looked bad, they tasted bad, everything about it was terrible. But it looked really nice on the website, so we we bought a few and sent them out. But yeah, it sounds nice. like you just ate them all and needed an excuse to eat them all. Yeah, they were yeah, terrible. Yeah. We couldn't to send them out. Yeah, 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 we had to go. keep them all. Yeah, yeah. You're listening to the Offsite Podcast with Jason and Carlos, where we talk all things construction and technology. Join us for discussions with industry leaders and insights into the latest trends in construction. Welcome back to the pod. So today we're joined by Balfour BT director, John Chu. He's a well-known guy across the building division within Balfour BT. Uh, he's a keen advocate of technology. He's flown through the ranks over uh, the past well, over his career so far. The CV is a real perfect example of what career progression looks like uh, within an organization. Um, I've got to know him over the past sort of year or so, so I've been really looking forward to this. So uh, welcome to the pod, John. Thank you. Um, nice to be here. So you started at Balfour BT as a graduate site manager. That's right. Um, when I think of a typical site manager, it's a strong, vocal kind of person, commanding respect over lots of people on site. What was it actually like doing that as a graduate? Well, you're the, yeah, you're, you're the guy with hardly any hair on your face, with a squeaky voice that no one wants to respect is normally what kind of happens when you're a graduate, when you just start. So, yeah, it, it is tough. It is tough because you're, you're going into a, an industry with people that have got many years experience above you and you're trying to organise them and manage them and try to get their respect and them to listen to what you're trying to say is always the hardest challenge for the first couple of years to, to get that respect and get people actually working with you collaboratively and not thinking that, just someone that hasn't got a clue and it's better just to, to, to ignore you and, and crack on. Yeah, for sure. Because, yeah, as you say, like fresh faced, coming onto site, it's a bit like I'd, I'd imagine it as a bit like becoming like an officer in the army and you go in as a 21 year old commanding troops, right? And you need to yeah. be that sort of authoritarian sort of individual. So, what was that like? Like, were those jobs, were they really difficult to actually do this sort of job and do it well at the beginning? Or were you sort of shadowing individuals to sort of bring you up through those well, initial I, sort of years? I had quite a unique, quite a unique um, uh, start. So I, I was well, I was working for, for Belfort B, but we were a company called Mansell then. So there was different divisions when I first started at Belfort B where we were working on like small works. So this was our special works, they called it, which is like jobs from 1 million to 5 million. It could be like school extension, school refurb, you're in a hospital doing some refurbs, or, or you're doing small small add-ons to buildings quite often, or groundworks and such. So it was a really good kind of start to the career on getting stuck, stuck in, really, because all they would be on site would be me and a project manager or a senior site manager. And you're kind of thrown in the deep end, and you have no choice but to, to do everything. So, you know, you don't have a design manager, you don't have a planner. The engineer will come once a week. Um, if you're lucky, and you've got to beg and plead that another job doesn't steal him off you. So it, it was a kind of environment where you had no choice but to, to kind of get market, to, to get stuck in and get involved and deal with the subcontractors because they'll come to the office and if the other guy's not there or what have you, they're going to come and talk to you and they're going to ask you all the questions and ask you to sort it out. So I think as a way of understanding and actually kind of getting involved in all the different aspects of site management and construction management, it was a really interesting way to do that, which is not always the same maybe with what I get involved in now on jobs that are like multi, multi-millions with, with huge like 30, 30, 40 people in the team. And you have graduates now that, that are part of a section of works who maybe don't get as much exposure or it's not as easy to get exposure because you have to go and look for it rather than you just being no choice but being like dragged into it because you look around the room and it's just you. And then they're all there wanting wanting something off you. So that, yeah. that, was, that was what I think really helped to start my career on on getting involved in everything because I had no choice but to, but to step up. John, nice to meet you, mate. I uh, I was looking forward to, I was really looking forward to talk to you. Uh, and one of the things that you said before really jumped out, which was around like building respect. So when you started as a graduate, and I think if you think about like so many people enter the construction industry and they've got this same problem, which is they don't have the same experience. They've got to build and earn respect of the people on the ground. Like I, I'm reflecting on my own experience. You spend a lot of time trying to find that right way to build respect. So I guess if you were to think about, you know, talking to your you know past self now, knowing now what you know now, uh, or talking to another graduate, you know, what would you say are the techniques that work the best for you in terms of like 
cutting through and building respect with the the people that were more experienced than you on on the job so i think it, it is at the start it's proving your worth and that you're actually useful i think so because it's so easy to go in there and you you think you should get respect because you know especially when you work for a bigger a bigger a bigger tier one company or something people sometimes assume oh, because you work for a big company they should they should respect and listen, which unfortunately isn't always the case. And quite the opposite, sometimes. isn't it? Quite opposite, yeah, because people get actually their back up, which is kind of rightly so, to be honest, because you've got to respect the people you're dealing with that are often experts in their field. With with a lot of the guys I find, and I think, yeah, if I was talking back to myself um, when I first started, is, is realising that these guys are often experts in their field, but maybe not always experts in the coordination or interfacing with other trades, which is... Half the, half the reason, or one of the main reasons, to be honest, you know, we are here as a, as a main contractor is that we do that system integration. Being a benefit to the people you're working with and the people that you're supposed to be managing and actually seeing a benefit of talking to you because you will solve the blockers or the issues or you will coordinate with the other trays that they can't do because of where their set responsibilities and parameters are or they just don't have their own expertise in that section and therefore they need your help. They see that there's a worth speak to you and get involved with you and then see that your actions are, are backed up by um, uh, you well your words are backed up by your actions a better way to say it then that will gain respect where I think yep. when I first started there was a lot of I thought was what well, they should do because I'm the master manager because I'm the management which in reality is not the case at all yeah it's, su- it's super interesting because I think I had a similar I had a similar learning experience where like for me at the start to try and get respect was like I'll just outwork everyone so I'll do the like you know 5 30 in the morning till 7 30 at night <laughs> I'll do you know I'll just get I'll just be totally across like everything I, I think I need to be across and then as you go along I found that I started like resenting the people that didn't work as many hours and then I'd be, that would create like a lot of friction with me and like some of the other team members and like it definitely feels like the way to be successful as you go up, you need to like exactly what you said, make people successful. So like see you as a way to solve their problems. And yeah, it's a, I see a lot of people, especially in that like junior role, like do what I did and be like, my path is to outwork people. But like that has a, has a big limit. Um, you only get so far with that. Jason, I think it helps being six foot six too, trying to <laughs> tower over people with those early days. It's a bit yeah, of a but wild card. Like, like John said, I didn't have a hair on my face either, and I still don't. Yeah. So, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. um, so, John, I'm going to sound like a really weird little fanboy now, but um, if we look at your sort of career so far, it's not just impressive, but it's actually quite unique. So, you've gone sort of grad site manager to project director in a pretty short period of time, which is great. But you've also stayed in one company, which is actually quite unusual for main contractor staff. They always jump and hop, and that's the way that they jump up the tree. You've done that at one company, uh, built your career and like network around you. So like, it isn't typical, but how has that happened? Was that part of like your career strategy or is it like, yeah, how have you done, gone down that? So I think, yeah, I think there's, there's two parts. Definitely, I've been, I've been fortunate to have the right opportunities. And I think... For me, it was never like I want to be a project director. I think it's always been that I want to leave my own projects uh, and I always want to do something complex. And it's the little milestones of each step. Like, well, I want to be a site manager now. I want to get into senior site management. I want to become a project manager and work my way up. And what is the next goal that I need to achieve that? And I think the what you've said is, is kind of true, right, is to get the next role, it's often easier to jump ship and get the next role because then you start in that role and people will, will take you on in, in that role. And you may have not had to prove yourself per se um, as much as you would if you stayed with the company. And I think that's that's the one thing I had to learn quite quite early if I wanted to stay with Belfries um, was you don't get given the role until you've proven you can do the role, um, which can be quite frustrating, right? Because you're always then doing more than maybe you're being paid to do. And you're often then doing more responsibilities and working more potentially than other people around you, which leads, like Jason said, to a bit of resentment if you're not careful, because why am I doing more when when they're being paid the same or even potentially more, right? Because often, again, when you when you go up in your career, the, the people that have been working longer, um, have more experience, do have do are on, are on more and, and potentially better benefits, right? That's just the way of the world. So I think... 
I learned that quite quickly that there's no, there's no compare myself to other people I'm working with in that regards is just it's just going to lead you to resentment. So try to always try to avoid that. And it was very much given that 110. percent So it was it was trying to always always take that next step. So even if I was in a site manager role, I would try and do what I could and assist the project manager on taking some of that weight off them and, and, and you know, do either take some of their meetings, taking some of their design responsibilities, planning, what have you, is is try and be, again, leading to a benefit that the PM or whoever the, the, your, your line manager is, you are actually seen as a benefit and that you have the ability to actually take some of their, their work off them. Obviously, that can go twofold, right? Because you get the wrong line manager, they can obviously exploit that. So also is being mindful not to be exploited on what you're doing, but I ha- I've done quite a lot of distressed projects at, at, at Belfort BC, fortunate or not fortunate, um, which has allowed me to to jump into positions and 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 roles which is probably above what I was in, on at the time, and it was then taking that opportunity, given that 110 percent, and and proving that I can achieve in that role before I actually got given that role. And then it's the it's also then the the kind of not not balls, but I suppose it is balls to be honest. It is then the balls to actually speak up and make sure you get recognized for what you've done. Because again, it's so easy for and not even intentionally, I think, from line management, because they're busy with 110 other things, right? But it's it's to ensure that what you've done gets recognized, but also not in an arrogant way either, because that's also can come completely to put people off to and people think you're a bit of an upstart so I think yeah that in a in a, in a very long-winded way it is doing doing above your role and not expecting to be um, paid or recognized straight away for it until you've proven your worth yeah John that's so true if I like just sorry Carlos to jump in but like John the amount of uh like young engineers or project managers that that I'll speak to who will say similar things like Uh, I'm doing this job a level above me or two levels above me. I've been like promised a promotion three times or whatever, and I haven't got it. And everyone that they're talking to, the common wisdom appears to be like the only way to get up is to sort of jump companies. Then they go and look elsewhere and then eventually their company offers them and they're in that kind of, then you never feel great about that experience, no matter what the outcome is. Like you've looked elsewhere, you've had to let someone down. D- double clicking on like what you were saying does it require a couple of points along the way where you're like you know you're doing that level up do you have to push a bit to like if you were talking to yeah, like a, a, a sort of younger engineer or younger project manager or site manager you have to push a bit to to get there yeah you do you do need to push but you need to push with with clear evidence that you have done it because i think it's it's so easy to think you're doing it, but when you actually dissect what you've done, have you actually achieved it yet? And that's because doing a role for like a month doesn't mean you're now able to do it full time and, and, and actually get the end goal. And I think you know, even to get to the, the PD role I'm doing now, it was two years I was kind of doing that role, arguably, before I got it. Because it has to get to the point where the project ended and actually, yeah, okay, we did, we did achieve what we set out to achieve. Because until then, although I'm doing the job, have I actually achieved at, at, at that job? Will I actually get the end goal that that the business needs? So, I think it's it's looking at is not just are are you doing the role that's two grades or whatever above, but are you actually achieving the goal? Are you doing it well? Are you doing are you doing it well? You know. Yeah, and it's and it, but it's so easy because I've, I've spoken to so many guys about that that you know they will say exactly what you just said, Jason. I'm I'm doing more. I think I should be promoted. You know, and when you look and you go into it and go like, what have you? What have you achieved to prove you've done it? Not that you're just doing the role and you're you're, you're doing the day to day. That is important, you know. Is it, is it it's got to be recognised that you're doing the day to day. But every every job role, especially when you're in like uh, projects where there is always milestones to achieve, and you can achieve their milestones either well or poorly. Are you achieving the milestones well? And sometimes you've got to achieve it better than than the peers that are in that role as well. Because if you can do it even better than than the PMs or whatever, say you're site manager going to a PM role, an engineer going to a PM role, if you're doing it better than the people around you, or or at least on par, then that really shows that you are you are achieving. And that's that's often what I've had to use as a as a way to do the pushing, rather than just saying, Look, I've been doing it for three months. I do the day to day. Yeah, I'm ready. Rather than yeah, look, yeah, look yeah. what I've actually achieved, look what they've achieved. I'm either on the same or actually I'm doing better. That's that often is uh, a, a better way to to make people because they, everyone's always got to get signed off by someone, right? So there needs to be clear evidence 
And that sign off, you know, that there is proof proof on what you can do. Nail on head, mate. I totally agree, Carlos. You had something to say. Yeah, I was thinking it's like the old that saying that people say is like dress for the job you want, not one that the job you have. Yeah, With this, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. just do the job that you want and not the job that you have. It makes a lot of sense. Um did you find there was a lot of competition? Like, is is everyone doing the same, a similar strategy? Like within Balfour, for example, do you find that you're you're trying to do it at the same time that others are, or did you find you were quite unique in that sense? I think at the start there's quite a few, but recent years I think it's quite unique. There isn't actually that many people about a similar age that I've I've met in in, in recent years. Um, my, from from for a majority of different reasons, I guess. But I think yeah, in the early years, definitely um, when I was going for that site manager, senior site manager kind of movement into project management there was a lot of competition in that regard which actually i think is really healthy because it does it does push everyone to work work more 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 cleverly just rather than just hard because you you want to stand out and you want to prove your your worth so you you then competing on doing that to, to to in different more intuitive ways to do it but when i've come into the pm i think i did start project management quite early i was like 28 when i kind of got into the project management so everything I was working with, with were always older, so it was kind of a whole different dynamic where everyone I was I was kind of uh, and peers with were were ten years plus, or I was also having people working for me that were old enough to be my dad, and it's that whole whole kind of challenge that I then got into about how do you how do you manage people that yeah they are old enough to be your dad, or you're dealing with peers because you're on a bigger project with other project managers, and you are like you know ten years junior. And you're there trying to have the same opinion and same respect as as they've got. If that 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 was a whole new world that was actually quite challenging, to be honest. So, are you are you learning that by doing it? Are you learning that by reading? Are you do you have mentors that like help guide you to the like different strategies? Because yeah, as you go through the different roles, each one has like a different skill set that you have to to sort of nail, and not just yeah, you have to do well at to be good at the. The job, and sometimes it's a, the opposite of what you would have done three jobs before. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it like are you are you avidly trying to like teach yourself? Are you just observing what works and doesn't work for other people, or, or is there mentors? How do you, what's the what's your strategy? So I did have a mentor in, um, when I was moving again from like the, the site manager to project manager. He unfortunately left the, the business, and we keep still keep in contact, but he's not a regular mentor that he once was. A lot, a lot of it has been like I have read up, read a few books, a few management books, and, and and they help a bit, right? They they give you they give you an idea to potentially implement for yourself. But I think the key thing is you've got to learn your own way. And actually, I, I remember a project manager taught me that quite early in my career is that there isn't a right way that you I can just say look do it this way and it'll work. You've got to learn the way that suits you and your your own behaviors, your own attitude, your own way of thinking, you've got to have your own then kind of leadership and management. And I think much of that is actually also to do with leadership and not just management is, I didn't think there was a distinction, to be honest, at the start of my career. And then mm-hmm. when I got five into my career, there's a massive distinction between leadership and management and, and the shadow you cast and what your actions do, actually how people perceive it and taking that into account. Because I think that... That's been again a bigger thing is being technically strong and and getting into the role of, of a more senior management. You can get there because you're technically technically you know advanced and you're an expert in your field and uh, but maybe not so good at, at the management and leadership. But you've got there via that and that I think was quite telling the people I was meeting. It says that you could tell the difference from someone who got there just from their technical expertise, which is nothing wrong with that in any shape or form but definitely makes it harder to move forward unless you start learning them soft skills and start learning that the importance of, of leading the right way and, and how you operate and how that affects the people beneath you and how they operate. And I think that is something that I had to learn myself and learn the best way that I could get the most out of people. And I found that because of the, the kind of age that I was going into them roles is that I needed to lead from the front. It kind of like proved my worth to them. Again, it's again going back to the thing I kind of said at the start, to be honest. I don't think that's changed, to be honest. The, the more I've gone up the ladder is that mm-hmm. people have got to be willing to invest in you and you to invest in them. So I've often always thought that look, I, will, I will get my hands dirty. I will get involved in the day-to-day if I need to, to show that I can do it, for one. But two is that look, I'm not scared to. Uh, and and that has helped gain respect for some of the guys that, especially when they're, 
they're of more more experience of years or or or, or time served. That, okay, this guy, the guy can talk the talk, but can he, he can actually walk the walk as well? And I think that that has been the biggest the biggest learning for me is if you can do that and you can get their buy in and trust, then uh, yeah, you're you're going to have a smashing team. Yeah, if I could put like that in a bottle and tell myself when I was 21 years old, that's that would be perfect, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think? Um, so you mentioned you were, you hit project manager quite early, and like a mentor was a good part of helping you transition from site manager to project manager. You're then like working with people that are 10 years older than you. Do you think it's like a really? A, is it a big boost that like like people always say you're the average of the people around you? Do you think that's what accelerated you then? And then you're always working with older, so you always sort of catching them quicker than if you weren't working directly with them i think so i think yeah definitely there is a bit of that carlos and i think but what what i think is what what can you i always thought a little bit as well as what you can add and i think like even the time we've worked with, you, with yourself carlos is that you know the, the, the project management in construction and in just like the industry with it being rail or roads or, or, or highways whatever your, your kind of discipline is is <clears throat> technology is, is massively changing things and keeping on top of of how that is integrated into how we do our role day in day out is is becoming quite quite a major thing i think and the it is easier i would say on the whole for for the younger generation because we've just been involved in technology a lot more than 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 others others have of of our years because of the obvious reasons it just wasn't there when they were younger and it's it's looking not only as Instead of, well, not, um, you know, looking to be on the same par as themselves, just how they're doing it, but actually how I can do it. And that is what I'm, I'm quite strong. I tell a lot of the guys about, about that too, is don't try and emulate what they're doing because they've been brought up in a different, different, a different kind of time, a different kind of culture. The culture has changed better or worse. You know, I'm sure I'll speak to myself, my, my, my older constructors, man, say that saying that it's definitely got worse, <laughs> but some will say it's got better, but, um, I think it's important to take of what what either that person or myself has learned and what I think is important and actually what I can bring because of of what what I have gone through that is different to what they're doing and that actually I believe has helped quite a lot because there is initiatives that I've been you know, I'm working with a, with a PD quite closely on the project I'm on at the moment and we're learning quite a lot of of us of, of each other because he's 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 just turned fifty he's got a lot of experience that I just haven't had. But then also there's a lot of initiatives and a lot of ways that I operate in my project management style involving a lot of different technology, involving a lot of younger people that have this, this ability to, to transfer from the different data that actually makes our day-to-day job easier. He's actually, you know, learning from that as well at the same time and then respecting that because he's like, you know what, I need, to, I need to shape up a little bit on that because I could easily get left behind if I'm not careful. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's like you are you're way more equipped like in a lot of ways than like your typical, yeah, as you say, 50 year old PD who's gone through the ranks. Yeah, yeah. And, and, pen, and young paper, people need to drawing. recognize that. That, that. That's a positive, not a negative. And, yeah. um, and don't be wrong, it's, it's not, it's not going to replace your technical ability. You still need to, and I think that is it. I've worked really hard to learn how to build. Like I've spent a lot of time out of hours learning about the technical build and then also applying it in, in at work as well, because unless you know what you're talking about, you can be as digitally minded as you want. If you can't, if you can't actually build something properly, then you, you know people you can't can spell it a while away, can't they? Exactly, they'll, they'll just think you're an imposter, right? So yeah, you've got to know what you're talking about. And, and but tying them two together in the kind of more senior management role, that is a new thing in the industry. That isn't that isn't something that you know. If you go back 15, 20 years ago, whatever that that wasn't wasn't about them. It just the technology wasn't advanced, and we just weren't you know doing the things we are doing now. That that. If you go back a few years ago, even just a few years, it just wasn't wasn't there yet. So I think there's a lot to play for moving into you know moving into the, the near future that 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 can put you above above other people if you can register that, but not forget the basics as well. Yeah, definitely. I think if I was to take you back then to um, something you kind of touched on right at the start, and uh, something that reflects a decision I had to make when I was a young engineer. And let's imagine we're talking to a young project manager, site manager, engineer. And they, they've got a couple of options of like the next job or a very early job to go to. And there's, a, there's, there's the choice of like a job that they know is going well versus the sort of distressed problem. People are saying it's, you know, hard graft here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What's, what's the tip to which one to pick? So for me personally, I've always gone for the hard graft. 
because <clears throat> the most I've ever learned is off the jobs that are in an absolute abysmal state. And I've, I've and arguably I have built my career based on that, to be honest, um, because you just, when things go wrong is when you learn it. I know everyone says that, and it, but it's true. It's true. When, when things aren't, aren't right and you have to then unpick it and then have to delve so much more into, into the, the detail to solve the issue, you therefore learn it. And if a job's going really well and you've got really good subcontractors or, or people working for you that are just owning their areas or responsibilities so well, then actually sometimes you may not learn. So I think if you get that opportunity, like you said, do do go for the yeah, do go for the distressed one, I would I'd recommend. But be mindful that are you one either ready for it, you have the capacity for it. Because I think that's the other point to have is the last thing also is that if you haven't got the capacity or you don't feel ready for it, then then take the other option because it can go the other way and you could get easily burnt out, stressed out, and actually then kind of slow down your career because I, I have dealt with you know and I have worked with people where they thought they were ready they've taken on the responsibility and haven't been yeah, able yeah. to cope really burnt out and I've met some really good guys where they just took the responsibility too early or they thought they could go and do that to a distressed job because they saw that as a quick way to, to rise up the ladder they then oh got completely overwhelmed got completely beaten down um burnt out and then they're kind of like they've kind of stopped yeah, and they've kind of been yeah. off by the whole thing, which is so sad to see when when someone's lost their kind of buzz because it is a hard job, and you've got to love what you do to to do construction because every day is difficult, every day is different, and if you lose your kind of fire and buzz to do that, then yeah, then you, your development in the career is just gonna gonna end too. But yeah, I have like a, I have like a love, and uh, I have a similar thought. I have a love for like those typical, the the really hard and and possibly distressed jobs because. There's like that saying of like you can you know people learn from their mistakes, but if you go to a difficult or a distressed job, so you're getting that like free kick. You're actually learning from other people's mistakes. You don't actually have to make them yourself. You can see, yeah, yeah. you know, like Bob did this three months ago, and now the job's just like effed. You know, so you get to learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, but yeah, you do have to you have to know what you're signing up for. Yeah, yeah you don't want to go to the job and then and then turn it into the uh, the problem. Yeah, yeah. you my, don't um, want to be Bob. You don't want to be yeah, Bob. Yeah, don't, and they're like, don't, don't, don't like do Bob. what he did. Yeah. John now. Yeah, John just, <laughs> just picks it yeah. this. Yeah, exactly that. My um my old boss always said, go to small jobs and go to ones that aren't doing well because the small job means you actually see like the full cycle of everything. Like I grew up on like five hundred million pound jobs where you see such like a tiny little part. Of yeah. It. Um, to go to small ones, to go to tough ones because you actually learn sort of real world stuff so uh that yeah. makes a lot of sense i totally i totally agree with that i really do because it, 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 it is hard though because sometimes you've got no choice but to work for the bigger the bigger things uh, bigger projects and i think the advice i've given to some of the graduates that I've, I've i've been working with closely in recent years is see if you can move around because don't just go you know, it's like you said a five million job you could be getting involved in the dry lining package right and and, and maybe one other and you've just spent five years looking at dry lining. That's what <laughs> yeah. I'm so, yeah. I always say to them, look, do, you're going to have to speak out because you just get pigeonholed and speak out and get asked to be moved about every six months, a year, or what have you. So you do get to experience different parts of that one big project. Um, otherwise, like you said, yeah, you'll just, you'll just see such a small section. But if you do a small job, you have the opportunity to see everything. Yeah, you said, um, John, you said something before about like the difference between leadership and management and like like you early on, I, I didn't think that there was a, a lot of difference between them. But um, in this job, one of the things that we get to do is talk to lots and lots of projects every day. And when you talk to lots and lots of projects every day, you definitely see the difference on the project between a project that has great like leadership running it versus ones that don't. And, you know, it's the, you know, the people that you interact with all have like, they're working to a common goal. They're like, you know, they, even if the job's high pressure, they might be stressed. They're like that, you know, they kind of know what their goal is and their purpose and, and they're, they're all helping each other towards it. Whereas the other jobs are, you know, people are like second guessing the decision of management. There's that kind of, uh, that vibe and you can you can smell it immediately when you're interacting with the project so I totally agree and like you and I haven't worked together but from what Carlos has said you can definitely you've definitely got that like leadership piece nailed down so yeah that's cool I appreciate it John we're probably gonna have to wrap up then but uh no thank you very much for coming on today that was uh really enjoyed that conversation so thank you yeah thank you guys we appreciate being on thank you for having me thank you